In this video, we will discuss what does the course cover. The first chapter is the nature and scope of the problem. We will be discussing, first of all, what is the threat? How to analyze the threat? How bad is it? What types of threats are out there? What's specific to PHP? And how can you get some help? The next video talks about what are the consequences when a website is not protected against attack. You will learn that the consequences can include financial loss, loss of service, identity theft, and website infection. The next video discusses what are the most common forms of attack. You will learn about cross-site scripting, remote code injection, session hijacking, fixation and request forgery, and finally, the famous SQL injection attack. In this series of videos, these attacks will actually be demonstrated for you using the Sample Suites Complete website. Then you will learn about what are the most common vulnerabilities that attackers can exploit. These include unplanned information disclosure, where attackers probe your website and try to discover error messages and other accidental pieces of information that you might have forgotten exist. We'll look at something called predictable resource location insufficient authorization, improper access controls, misconfiguring your server, and mishandling file uploads. The next video will cover the various resources which are available. These resources fall into two categories, web resources and also resources that cover software-specific considerations. The lab for this chapter will have you practice various hacking techniques on the included Suites Complete website. You will learn how to execute a reflected cross-site scripting attack, exploiting an information disclosure vulnerability, executing a code injection attack, and exploiting a file upload vulnerability, and finally executing an SQL injection attack. The purpose of this lab, of course, is not to turn you into a hacker, but to give you insights as to how the attacks are actually accomplished. The next chapter covers understanding, filtering, validation, and output escaping. It's important to understand what these terms mean and, of course, how you can implement them in PHP. In the first video in this chapter, you will learn what is filtering, validation, output escaping, and why use these. And finally, you will gain an understanding as to why you would want to filter, validate, and escape output. This video will also cover the differences between filtering, validation, and output escaping. The next video will discuss common PHP filtering functions and techniques. This will include changing the data type, using commands such as strip tags, stir replace, and pregreg replace. There is a video which covers the most common PHP output escaping functions. HTML entities and HTML special characters are featured. Next, there's a separate video on a special command called filter var, which will do both filtering and validation. You'll be looking at common validation filters, which allows filter var to serve as a validation mechanism. The sanitization filters allow filter var to work as a filtering mechanism. In the lab, you will be working with the raw suites complete website to filter and validate posted form data. You will be modifying the add member form, adding validation and filtering for all fields. You will then add appropriate validation messages and make sure that invalid entries are not added to the database. You will then be able to test using the techniques demonstrated in earlier videos. The next chapter deals with preventing the most common forms of attack. As mentioned before, to prevent cross site scripting attacks, you will be analyzing techniques regarding stored and reflected cross-site scripting and learning how to escape output to prevent these sorts of attacks. You will also learn how to protect forms as well as incorporating new HTML5 features. In the video on preventing session hijacking and forgery attacks, you will learn how to regenerate session IDs, how to provide a logout option, how to set up a timer to keep your sessions short, and finally, how to build a profile of the user using external factors, which reduces your reliance on a sole point of vulnerability, namely the session identifier. In the video, Remote Code Injection Attacks, 
you'll be looking for vulnerabilities surrounding the include statement. We'll be examining possible vulnerabilities with a functionality called auto-loading. The PHP INI settings will be examined. And finally, there will be a discussion on some remote or more obscure forms of injection attack. In the lab for this chapter, you will be protecting the shopping cart on the Suites Complete website against cross-site scripting attacks. You will be protecting the website against character-based attacks by setting a specific character set of UTF-8. You will be securing the login process against session hijacking. And finally, you will implement some protections to prevent remote code injection. The next chapter deals with protecting against common website vulnerabilities. The video on protecting against unplanned information disclosure discusses concepts such as proper error handling, reporting, and logging. You will look at how to shut off the display of errors. Techniques on exception handling in object-oriented programming will be discussed. And finally, there's a discussion on improving code efficiency. The video on protecting against predictable resource location will discuss things such as changing open source defaults, staying away from obvious names, what PHP INI settings should and should not be set, and also the default PHP INI settings which should be changed. The video on protecting against insufficient authorization will discuss improper access to secure areas of the website and also improper authority for low-level accounts. There is also a video on protecting against improper access control. In this video, we will discuss things such as the proper storage of passwords, password controls, creating new and resetting old passwords, and the logic which you should follow. And finally, a discussion on PHP hashing and encryption extensions. The video on avoiding misconfiguration discusses things such as file system rights, various PHP INI security settings, and also running PHP as a CGI binary. In this chapter, there's also a video on protecting file uploads. You will learn which PHP INI settings are appropriate to set, how to implement safety checks, sanitizing the file name, moving the uploaded file to a secure location, implementing HTML5 features, and finally, a number of other safety measures which should be taken. In the lab for this section, you will be improving the security on the Suites Complete website to prevent exploits of common vulnerabilities. You will be tightening up the website to protect against information disclosure, insufficient authorization, predictable resource location, and also you will be setting up proper access controls. You will be reworking the configuration of the website and finally, in the contact form, implementing proper controls for file uploads. The final full chapter in this collection discusses protecting against SQL injection attacks. You will learn how to protect a MySQL database. The discussions will include using an up-to-date extension, not allowing direct access over the Internet, implementing proper database user access controls, and finally, reviewing default settings. There's a video on implementing database escaping and quoting. You will learn what is database escaping or quoting, what are the benefits, and how can these be implemented in PHP. There's another video on using prepared statements. You will learn what is a prepared statement, what protection does it provide, and how can you implement a prepared statement in PHP. In the lab for this chapter, you will be protecting a MySQL database against SQL injection, again in the Suites Complete website. You will be rewriting certain model classes in order to use the latest extension and also to implement prepared statements and database escaping and quoting. The final video discusses the author. You will be learning about the author's work, programming languages used, operating system environments and protocols, education, and certifications.